Hi friends, welcome to Organic True Crime with Sydney Hopes. Today I'm going to be talking about the famous trailblazing Sarma Melangalis. Mm, that's a tough last name and from now on I'm going to be referring to her as just Sarma. <laughs> and the scandal involved with her and her restaurants. Sarma was born in 1972 in Massachusetts to John and Susan. She had one older sister. Sarma's father, John, was from Latvia, and he was actually a physicist that worked for MIT, and her mother, Susan, was a professional chef who eventually shared her love for cooking with her daughter, Sarma. And growing up, Sarma was known for being pretty reserved. She just kind of kept to herself. She was pretty quiet and enjoyed reading most of the time. And she said that she always saw herself as being just different. In 1981, when Sarma was nine years old, her parents ended up getting a divorce. I'm not sure who she ended up living with, but I do know that she continued to be very close with her mother throughout her life. Both of her parents did eventually get remarried, and her mother actually pretty quickly ended up remarrying to a man named Bob Jassy, and the two of them founded and opened an apple orchard called Allison's Orchard. In 1994, Sarma graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with an economics degree, and from there she went on to work at a few different jobs in investments. She moved around a little bit doing this, and she basically said that she went into investments because that's what people did with an economics degree. But she didn't really like it, and at the time, financially, she didn't really need to have a job. So after a few years of working in investments, in 1998, she decided to enroll in the French Culinary Institute in New York City, and she studied under Jeffrey Chaudhary. Around this time, Sarma started working with writing cookbooks, and through that, she set up a meeting with a world-renowned chef and restaurateur named Matthew Kenny. And right after meeting, the two just really hit it off, and very shortly after started, they mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and <laughs> very shortly after meeting, the two started dating. And from there, they decided that they wanted to open a restaurant together. And Jeffrey Chaudhary agreed to back them on the restaurant and loan them the money to open it. So in 2004, Matthew Kenny and Sarma, backed by Jeffrey Chaudhary, opened Pure Food and Wine. And this was New York's first upscale, raw food, vegan restaurant. So it pretty quickly took off. It did really well. It was very popular. It was Actually, Alec Baldwin started being a regular at this restaurant, and he and Sarma became kind of friends. And a little fun fact, he actually met the woman who is now his wife at Pure Food and Wine. So that's fun. <laughs> anyway, so the restaurant was doing really well, and after a few years in 2007, they expanded by opening a takeaway and merchandise store. It was called One Lucky Duck Juice and Takeaway, and they did have an online version of that as well. But shortly after that, in 2008, Matthew and Sarma broke up. And after this, they just couldn't work together. Things were not going well. And each of them wanted the other one out of the restaurant and not part of the restaurant anymore. So they both, both separately approached Jeffrey Chaudhary about buying out the other person and having them not be a part of the restaurant anymore. And... Jeffrey Chaudhary said that he thought about it and Matthew Kenny had a past of making poor financial decisions and Sarma was new and doing really well so he decided to back Sarma and he loaned her about two million dollars to buy out the whole restaurant so she now owned Pure Food and Wine and One Lucky Duck and Matthew Kenny was no longer part of it at all. But Sarma also now owed Jeffrey Chaudhary two million dollars roughly. Around this time, Sarma found and adopted her dog, Leon, and Leon was is very, very important to her. Um, she continued to always be kind of reserved. She was social at work and was very, very involved in the restaurant and her business. But at home or outside of work, she was not really very social and tended to just be home with her dog. Her dog was her best friend. And he, it's important to remember that her dog was very, very important to her. He is In 2011, Sarma notices a guy on Twitter who has been tweeting back and forth with Alec Baldwin and seemed to kind of be friends with him. 
and she liked his sense of humor and started talking to him from there and found out that his name was Shane Fox and that he lived in Massachusetts, which is where Sarma grew up. So they kind of bonded over that and they just continued talking and eventually talked outside of Twitter and only talked online for a long time, but they got along well and I guess bonded. So eventually they did meet in person. And when they did that, Sarma's dog Leon really liked Shane. And to Sarma, that was very important. That really mattered that her dog liked him. That was a good sign. Now Shane Fox was very mysterious. He always wore really nice clothes and like Rolexes and stuff and just carried himself like he had money. And he told Sarma that he worked for it was it was a black ops and so he couldn't really talk about his job he couldn't really tell her anything that he did just that he had money and he told her that he had a lot of money offshore too and eventually as they continued dating sarma met shane's father and he confirmed everything that shane had been telling him because she said she was eventually kind of or she was the whole time kind of suspicious of him but the fact that his dad backed him up that really made a difference for her which understandably it would eventually sarma starts bringing shane around the restaurant and around the office which the office was actually out of her apartment so i guess they were dating it kind of makes sense that he's at their apartment but all of her employees were kind of confused about who he was because she didn't really talk about it and what his role was because they said that they didn't really seem like a couple. They weren't like affectionate at all. So they just didn't really understand the relationship and who this person was that was just kind of at the office all the time now. And then one day the office gets a call and the caller ID says it's from Anthony Stranges and someone answers it and realizes that it's Shane calling. So they're kind of curious from this and some of the employees decide to Google Anthony Stranges. And at this point they find out that Shane is not actually Shane Fox. He is actually a man named Anthony Stranges. He has a very interesting past. And the employees are very close with Sarma. It's a pretty small business at this point. They're, they're close with her and they approach her about it and they do tell her what they find. And she just kind of gives them excuses and just kind of basically blows them off and doesn't really listen. So let's talk about Anthony Stranges and who this is. Anthony was born in 1980. He grew up in Massachusetts and not a whole lot is really known. I couldn't find a whole lot about his childhood really other than he was very close with his father and his father was known for being a heavy drinker and a heavy gambler and this rubbed off on Anthony at a pretty early age. We do know that Anthony was married once before and I couldn't find a year for when they were married but Anthony was at some point married to a woman named Stacy and they did have one child together and Stacy has a pretty similar story we'll see later on but Anthony kind of started his manipulation with her and throughout their relationship, he and his father both stole from her several times and stole her her jewelry and would pawn it so that they could go gamble. So they had a very difficult relationship, to say the least. And one day, Anthony's father had a heart attack and was sent to the hospital. And the whole family went to the hospital to visit him. And then his wife, Stacy, had to leave because her daughter had a softball game. And Anthony was supposed to meet them at the softball game later because it was their turn to work the concession stand that night. And Stacy says that that was the last time she ever saw Anthony. They left the hospital and he never showed up to the softball game and he never showed up ever again. That was it. He left her with their daughter. And then in 2011, he meets Sarma and that brings us back to where we were with her employees finding out who he actually is and approaching her and not really getting much out of her and here on out I'm gonna be referring to him as Anthony that's his actual name um, most of the people in the restaurant knew him as Shane and called him Shane but other than that his name is Anthony he does have several different names throughout this story and we'll get <laughs> to some more later anyway Anthony had convinced Sarma that he had money offshore that he could access eventually 
and that he could pay off her debt to Jeffrey Chaudhary so that she could buy the restaurant and it could be fully hers. And then he told her it would, it would be easier for him to give her that money if they were married. So they decided to get married and they didn't tell anybody and they didn't have a celebration. They just met somebody and signed some papers and that was it. And eventually they did tell people, but it was always just kind of like offhand, like it was no big deal and they didn't really want to talk about it. And people were still weirded out by it because they didn't seem like a couple, but technically they were and now they were married. And that led to even more confusion at the restaurant because he was around a lot and they weren't really sure what his role was because he was now married to the boss, but he didn't work there, but he kind of acted like he did. And all this time, Anthony is slowly manipulating Sarma and convincing her and eventually convinces her that he is some kind of being that is more than human and that he, with the help of some higher powers, can transform Sarma and also her dog Leon and make them immortal and give them everything they ever wanted. And the only thing Sarma has to do in order to get this transformation is to pass all the tests that the higher powers give her. And it turns out that these tests were basically just Sarma having to wire any amount of money that Anthony asked for directly to him without asking any questions about him, without knowing anything. And in the beginning when she would do this, he would pay her little bits back, but not the amount that he took. He would just give her small amounts and he had lots of reasons and excuses for that, but pretty much she wasn't allowed to ask about it. And if she did, she was questioning everything. And that was the whole point was to test her and see if she could just go along with it without asking. And then he would, if she was ever hesitant for sending this money, he would say that she was valuing money and things over him and they loved each other and they were reincarnated beings that had been, were meant to be together. And how could she value money more than him? He was always very insistent that they were just around the corner from getting everything they wanted. They were so close. They, she just had to hang on a little while longer and just not question things for a little bit longer. And then they would have everything as long as she didn't question them at all and did every single thing that they wanted. He also eventually, which Sarma didn't find this out for a while, but he did had gain access to her email and her phone. So he knew everything that Sarma was doing at all times and who she was talking to and who she was with. And he would kind of say things and apply and hint to that he knew what she was doing and who she was with and that really freaked her out but also confirmed things that he was saying because she didn't know that he was reading her emails and tracking her knew where she was she just thought he just knew which went along with all the stuff he was telling her so eventually as Sarm is having to give Anthony large sums of money a lot it starts coming from the business and Anthony starts getting more and more involved with the business and showing up more and more because of his mysterious job. He was traveling a lot and wasn't there, but now he's there more and more. And he starts making Sarma feel like they're constantly being watched and sometimes they're in danger and sometimes they have to pack up and just leave without any questions. And because of this, he starts distancing Sarma from her business and a lot of employees are starting to have trouble getting a hold of Sarma and she just kind of disappears without saying anything when before she was always there and always very very involved and very committed to her businesses now all of a sudden they don't see her all the time and she's like traveling around and just randomly and not really explaining why or where she's going or how long she'll be gone you know and this Anthony dude is just showing up and Telling him it's fine. And then eventually, Anthony gets himself basically an assistant, a friend, I don't know. It's a man named Nazim. And Nazim also starts showing up at the restaurant a lot and being involved. And the employees have no idea who this man is. And he came here with Anthony, who they also don't really know who he is. So they're just really being thrown into this without any explanation from Sarma. And she's not really around anymore to even ask for an explanation. 
Eventually, Nazim started taking all the server's tips at the end of the night, and he would deposit them to show up on their checks instead of getting cash at the end of the night, which was a new thing, and the servers, again, didn't really know Nazim, so they were really weirded out and bothered by this, especially when they started not getting their paychecks, and they would get a weird email from Sarma that didn't really seem like it was from Sarma, kind of explaining why they're weren't getting their paychecks or why saying something about like changing banks or just giving some vague explanation or those who were getting their paychecks saying that it's going to bounce or them finding out that their paycheck bounced. And after about a month of the employees not getting paid and not really getting explanations from their boss and their boss is nowhere to be found, they eventually all walk out and the restaurant is forced to close because the staff refuses to work without being paid anymore. When this happened, it was one of the times when Anthony had told Sarma she had to leave town and so she was not around when the restaurant actually closed, but she was able to collect enough money somehow from people that she knew to pay everyone back and to reopen the restaurant. And when this happened, most of the staff did return because they were a pretty close staff. They really cared about Sarma and they wanted to be there for her, so they did return, but some of them didn't. And I understand that some of them just didn't trust her anymore after that. And when the restaurant reopened, Sarma was still very, very distant. She wasn't really there at all. And Anthony was the only one that was there. And then one day, suddenly, Anthony tells Sarma that she has to go to Rome. And he doesn't tell her for how long she'll be there. She's getting a one-way ticket. They have to go. And at the airport, Anthony takes a step back and says, I'm not going with you. You have to go by yourself. You can't ask me any questions about it. And just sends her around by herself with no explanation. <sighs> and during this time, while she's gone, Anthony calls a meeting at the restaurants with all the staff, which they all were really weirded out about. Why? Because who is this guy calling a meeting, right? So anyway, everybody shows up and he tells them that he's going to be buying the restaurant. So things are going to be changing and there might be some weird issues, but everybody will be recompensated will be compensated <laughs> for anything that happens during this change. And he says that he knows there's a lot of questions, but he's there he doesn't really have a lot of details right now. Just know that things are gonna be happening. At the same time, while Sarma was gone, Anthony reached out to her both of her parents and her older sister and tried to set up a meeting with them. And they were all really weirded out by it and said they didn't feel comfortable without Sarma and without telling Sarma that they were meeting, so they said no. But he was eventually able to contact her mother enough to convince her that Sarma was in trouble and Sarma needed money from her, she needed help. And he convinced Sarma's mother to send him money several times and ended up taking about $400,000 from her. Eventually, Anthony calls Sarma and tells her that she passed the test and that she can come home. So she returns to the U.S. and Anthony picks her up from the airport and instead of taking her home, he drives her to Las Vegas. And she says at this point, she just kind of, she knew everything was over. She just kind of gave up and went numb and shut down. And she eventually surrendered her phone to Anthony and just said she couldn't handle it and for him to respond to anything. And during this time, employees again went another month without being paid and without hearing from Sarma and without even getting any kind of explanation this time, they didn't have anything. They walked out and One Lucky Duck and Pure Food and Wine closed for the final time. While they're in Las Vegas, Sarma didn't talk to anybody and everyone just heard from Anthony and he would say that she was fine or he would explain everything but nobody got to talk to Sarma until her family was seriously concerned and demanded to hear something from her when he just kind of passed her the phone and she said, yeah, I'm okay. And that's pretty much it. And she's an adult, so they have to just take her word for it and say, okay, I, I guess she's okay. Even though you know she's not, but you know, what can you do? While in Las Vegas, the couple started using the names Chris and Emma so again, we have another name for Anthony. See, I can't even remember his name because he has so many. There was another time he was Michael. 
Anyway, <laughs> there's a lot. At this point, they're Emma and Chris, but I'm still going to call them Sarma and Anthony because of those are their real names. While they were in Las Vegas, Sarma said she doesn't, she didn't really see Anthony at all. They didn't share rooms when they stayed in places. They would either get adjoining rooms or just two separate ones near each other. They weren't really staying together or acting like they were married at all. She didn't see him. And Sarma really didn't like it in Las Vegas. She's a vegan and doesn't eat like fast food and junk food. And that's pretty much all she could find. And she doesn't gamble. So didn't really like that. She said that at one point, Anthony tried to teach her to play poker, but it didn't really go well. And that was really it. So she was alone and just depressed. She did still have her dog with her, but that was it. And she wasn't talking to anybody and just was not doing very well. In 2016, when investors weren't getting anything from Sarma, money or even word of, of from Sarma, they decide to press charges. And this is when a warrant is put out for the arrest of both Sarma and Anthony. And Anthony finally tells Sarma that they're gonna go home. So they pack up and leave Vegas, but instead they end up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee and they end up staying there for 40 nights. And again, they have a room in a motel that's just two adjoining rooms. They're not staying together. And after 40 nights of staying in Pigeon Forge, Anthony uses a credit card and his own name to order a pizza and chicken wings from Domino's. And since the warrant is out for their arrest, and at this point, Tennessee police have been contacted and are looking for them, they see this and they use this to track him down and arrest Anthony in the lobby of the hotel they were staying at. Now they also knew they were looking for Sarma, so they went up to Anthony's room and they knock, and they don't hear anything. And after about a minute, somebody in the room next door sticks their head out, and the officer goes to tell her that it's nothing, go back in the room when he sees that it's Sarma. So then they enter the room and put Sarma under arrest as well. And the officer did note that compared to the photo that they had of the person they were looking for, Sarma looked very skinny and very frail and like she was not doing very well at this point. And don't worry, Leon was fine. The manager of the hotel took Leon until Sarma's father could come and get him. So he was okay. I know that's important. Anthony and Sarma were eventually transferred back to New York where their charges were. And once in New York, Sarma posted bail. So she was taken out of prison, but Anthony did not. And he ended up having to stay in prison for about a year before their trials came. Sarma took a plea deal and she pled guilty for grand larceny and scheme to defraud and criminal tax fraud. And um, her sentence was three and a half months. It was four months, but she had already served a little bit. So it ended up being three and a half months in prison and then four years of probation. And Anthony was found, I think he actually did go to trial, but he was found guilty and um, was sentenced to a year in prison plus five years of probation, but he had already served almost a whole year waiting for his trial. So he only had to serve just a little bit after the trial and then um, was put on five years probation, which actually just ended this year in 2022. So now he's just out living his life, doing his thing again, which is great. And you gotta wonder, I, I mean, that's how he has made his living his whole life. I'm sure he's just right back to it. Although this time it got pretty popular. So hopefully people have somewhat of a warning from him. I don't know, that's horrible. I don't know, it's just terrible that somebody could do this and Sarma was doing so well and headed for so many things and then she did she was the one that made the decision to give him the money so it was her, it's her responsibility and now she's stuck with about six million dollars of debt that she has to pay back and she just does that it doesn't go away just because she was convinced of something else just because somebody brainwashed her because she did do that. She did make that decision and it did end up affecting people. And there were like couples that worked at the restaurant and both didn't get paid and then neither of them had any money and then you have to pay rent and in New York City, like what are you gonna do then? Like she really, she really 
did her employees wrong multiple times. And I fully understand being in a situation like that, just shutting down. But you're responsible for a lot of people and their livelihood. You can't just shut down in that position and see what happens. But I don't know. It's really, it's really tough because you have to hold her accountable for doing that to be able to enter her business and to herself. But also, you just, you got to feel bad for her for being put in that situation. And for so long, it was like four years of not knowing who to trust and who to believe and what to do and just feeling stuck and lost in this situation. I don't know. I, she's, she's out and living her life now. She has been for a while. They made a documentary about her recently and I don't, I hope she's doing well, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you think about this one. I thought it was really interesting. This, uh, this month I'm going to be focusing on stories like this, scam artists, con artists. Um, yeah, I hope you had fun and let me know what you thought and what you want to hear from next time and I'll see you later. Bye.